Welcome to the video from the digitallifestyle.com and this video I'm going to have a look at what's changed in the Windows 10 April 2020 update. Now it might not be released yet but development's just about done so I thought I'd do this video just to show some of the changes in this build or in this development of Windows 10. And the code name for it was 20H1 so a lot of my previous videos have been will have been shown uh, with 20H1. So the code name for this development was Windows 10 20H1. You'll see quite a few references scattered around on the various development builds of this and it's some of the uh, documentation I'm going to go through as well. 20H1 meaning it's the first half of 2020 it will be released like Microsoft have done with all their previous builds uh, or previous updates to Windows 10. What is slightly different with this is that it's version 2004 which means the way that Microsoft do that is it's t version of 2020 04 for April so it's going to be released April 2004 um, that doesn't mean to say it'll be released in April it's just what Microsoft internal internally target the um, the reason this isn't called 2003 as previous years, because in 2019 it was 1903 and 1803 and 1703 and so on, is because Microsoft said it might cause some confusion uh, with uh, Windows Server 2003, which is obsolete now, but uh, people can get confused. So that's why it, it's changed from March to uh, April. The This development had a long, quite a long gestation time, just since uh, February 2019 was the first insiders build for this uh, development so it's had longer than previous updates to be developed but that doesn't mean to say that there's um, it's feature packed or anything like that there's more, the more subtle changes and it's the timing was due to the link with the Azure development so that's why the development was started earlier and is still and then it's going to be released probably slightly earlier as well this I expect to be released anytime really between February March April uh, 2020 so despite the amount of time that spent uh, on it, there aren't a huge amount of changes, but what changes on there are quite interesting and useful. Let's have a look at one thing that's changed quite a bit is Cortana. So Cortana, if I zoom back out, I'm running this, by the way, this build on my uh, Hyper-V uh, virtual machine on my Surface Laptop 2. And this is the old Cortana. Here you can see with the text notifications. And here, let's close that if I go is the new Cortana so you can see I can do things like uh, send an email and it will bring up uh, a quick box so I can send an email the more I can do is send an email to and I can you could actually do send an email to and so on like that and you can get a full um, text way of sending email but you can do things like check my email uh, there's some examples reminders to bring cookies on Friday email my team it's got Microsoft to do integration all the trivial stuff like um, the jokes and things like that have gone even the weather has gone on uh, current builds and of course you've got this new look app as well which is resizable and you can drag that around place that wherever you want it's US only at the moment. Hopefully they'll get that um, done by the time that, uh, that they'll get that opened up to more regions by the time this gets released to the general public. But um, I've set my machine to US region. That's why I can, can test this. But like I said, you can do Microsoft to do and things like that. And it's more about productivity and less about sort of a, a rival to the Amazon Alexa. So Cortana has been new and uh, improved somewhat it's mainly text-based as well but you can still do the voice as well so you still got the voice but it's bringing that focus on productivity that means that the Cortana has been taken out of the the text uh, or into the search box you, some of these changes have actually been applied to previous builds of Windows now but during the development this was rolled out so this has been changed a few times and this I think look is very similar to the one that's in the release versions at the moment anyway but uh, this is that new style of, of text input uh, with the search screens and they've improved the search indexing as well. Another thing that's been changed with the search as well is they've included um, OneDrive integration in the search. So I can start to, to search and it, it indexes all sorts of stuff and they're including um, 
all my OneDrive uh, content as well. So that's a nice to see the nice improve. So the engine has been improved, so it usually hits your machine less, uh, so it causes less performance issues. You've got the improved search on there. So now I'm going to look at the new keyboard features. And if you do the Windows key and the period key, you get the new keyboard. And here is the Kimoji keyboard. They've added some new ones into this now, so you can pick those to your heart's content and put them wherever you want them. So there you go. So there's new in the in the keyboard. So one of the new things in the Xbox gaming bar is it'll show the FPS, the frames per second. If you're in a game, you've got to enable it, which I've already done. And then you launch a game and you'll get the frames per second showing up in here. It also shows you your CPU usage and your, CP and your GPU and your RAM. This is a, a virtual machine, so I'm not going to get uh, any good games working on here. But if you're a gamer, you'll like the improvements to the Xbox gaming bar. And if you like virtual desktops, Microsoft have enabled the feature for you to rename these and to put in whatever you want uh, as the desktop there, including um, icons and you can use emojis in there as well. So uh, very handy if you want uh, to rename your virtual desktop so you can keep everything nice and neat. Now another one of the new features that I like is cloud recovery. So let's say your machine's going wrong. Um, you've got an issue with Windows and you want to reinstall it, then you can reinstall it from the original media, or which is kept on the local installation, or you can do it through the cloud. So you can go here, can reset, uh, you can say I want to keep my files, and you can choose your installation source. So this could be your local files or the cloud. So the good thing about the cloud is if you've got corrupt local files, it'll bring down a fresh set. In some cases, it can be quicker if you bring down the four gig cloud image rather than it having to rebuild the image based off the locally installed files that's how it can take us a long while so cloud option is a good way to go um, it brings the image down and recovers your machine I've actually done a separate video of how this works you can find that on our YouTube channel while we're in settings I'll show you a couple others that have changed the network status now shows you if you're connected to the internet and the amount of data that it's brought down um, since the network card was uh, initiated and you can also look at data usage and see what that is and you can also enter limits on there as well so if you've got a data cap then you can use that for that uh, quite a handy little function that also in settings is optional features as has a bit of um, an improvement so you can add an optional feature and now rather than just picking one at a time through this list you can check the ones you want to install and you can sort them and so on and just pick them and install it so it's a, when you're setting up a new machine it's quite handy that you know to pick all the optional features that you want and um, just click install you'll see an optional features now as well things like Internet Explorer 11 notepad paint um, they've all been adding to those optional features they're pre-installed but you can get rid of IE 11 for example also another change in settings is in delivery optimization uh, this is, you can now put an absolute absolute value in there. So this is the uh, background downloads of applications. And um, you can actually set up fixed limits on your bandwidth on there. Right, let's look at some more UI stuff now. Um, tablet mode's not been changed much on Windows 10 since it first came out. But what they have done in this uh, build is designed for the convertibles like the Surface... Um, Surface Pro range where you can flip between the different models of the keyboard without the keyboard. It's, I've just enabled tablet mode. You see now you've got the s separated icons out and the arrow button that collapses the text box and so on. Um, this is on a virtual machine and this is on a Surface laptop. So it's I think these separate a little bit more out if it knows it's a convertible, but you get the idea. It's still it's not anything. Uh, really exciting for tablet users. I think Windows 10X is going to probably bring something new for uh, convertibles, but for now, that's your tablet mode. So notifications have been improved with this release as well, um, mainly just to get the settings of notifications. So I've got a, a site here that initiates some notifications so I can show you what I mean. 
so there's the notification in actually now, now I've got this little cog there which I can take and I can turn off notifications for the site or I can go to the notification settings so a little bit more control over the, the notifications as they come through on task manager has been some changes if you've got GPU it shows you the temperature and if you've got a hard disk it shows you or the storage device so if you've got HDD there for a traditional hard drive or it'll show SSD if you've got an SSD drive on there it's a little thing but if you've got multiple drives it can be handy to see which one is being hit and you may have a drive for data and a drive for Windows or whatever so you can see them differentiate through there so you know which drive is which if you're a Linux user the Linux subsystem for Windows uh, version 2 is on this build and that's a huge amount of changes and it's probably a separate thing so maybe I'll do a separate video on this I do have a video on how to install it but included in the uh, Linux subsystem 2 it's full compatibility with Linux you can choose your install your your own operating system like Ubuntu or Debian whatever you want it's got improved performance it's much better than the WSL one and you can have both systems installed so check out my other video showing you how to install that but definitely one that's good for developers the language screens had a, a bit of a change as well. I forgot to show them when I was on settings. So another change to settings I didn't show before was the language screen that's been improved so you can quickly see what you've got installed and uh, quickly get to those settings so that's quite a nice improvement. There's an always on top mode for calculator. So you've got a little button there to show you it keeps it in always on top mode so you can uh, leave the calculator up and running while you're doing other things. There's improvements to Windows Sandbox and quite a few other minor changes as well so I'm going to keep the uh, log of these on the digitallifestyle.com and the blog post so those are all the changes that I wanted to show in this uh, 20H1 uh, version of Windows 10 probably called the Windows 10 April 2020 update. Thanks for watching this video, you can see on our YouTube channel all the way back to the very first builds of Windows 10 and uh, you can find me on Twitter at iStixon.